this next game is the very first in a long series of shmups by Taito. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first ever three screen shmup. The first ever three screen shmup, it is this is Darius by Taito. It's the odd aspect ratio. What's with the odd aspect ratio? Um, you're about to find out. I think their initial thoughts were they wanted to expand the playing field, but... Well, just look at it. <laughs> That's empty as fuck to the point where, you idiots, why'd you do this? This is also a, I think it's a two player game, might be a three player. One or two player before you start it. And don't you see the insert the coin to for two player to enter a game? Yeah, I can see that. So it's a two player game, not three or. But that is a lot of empty space of nothing you're wasting, people. Yeah, as far as shmups go, it's actually kind of empty. I mean, I've seen shmups like Moshihime Sama and Toho. Oh god, that's sh that's schmuck hell. Um, they refer to those kinds as bullet hells. This one seems empty. Like you made it op wide open, and you're not filling it with shit or making it a bullet hell. What's wrong with you? So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Derek. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Dude, this is not the worst I have seen for for size things. Uh, I could give you several of the ones from Active Fitness 2, and you would go, with, How are you supposed to know what you're supposed to do with that size? It's also like. Fuck it, you're going for the cheats? Uh, just to give myself maximum firepower. And since you go back anyway, I may as well just give myself infinite lives. So is it just repeating the same level you just played? He's still in zone A, and he, and he kept dying. No, better beat it. No, he had it. He kept dying, so we're not done yet. Did we find a secret area? Wait, what? Where are we now?
Now, off uh, off the top of my head, I can't see any justification for the for the giant size, but I'm sure there's a reason. <clears throat> And we'll probably see it soon enough. I should mention, however, that there is a recent game that was released just a couple of months ago. And you can actually buy it on Steam. A huge battleship. King Fossil A is approaching fast. Huh? definition of a battleship because that looks more like a fish. It does look like a fish. No, I got bloated up. That's nasty, dude. I got bloated up. Stop mentioning you're bloated. I said blowed. Guess I'm having grilled salmon tonight. Wait, what? I was about to say, did I just, did I just die? What the hell? Oh, it's branching pads. Okay. A zone is over. We are we are going into this into zone C. Okay. I'm willing to bet that this game got a lot of attention when it first came out. Oh yes, I can absolutely remember the marketing for this game. I it was up there with Mario and Cell and Metroid and all those other games. Okay, you stop being sarcastic, Kiri. Yeah, being sarcastic's your job. I mean, I'm, I'm merely referring to the fact that, oh, it's three monitors.
I mean, try to think of a game that, that you feel that could could have been enhanced if it had additional monitors. I mean, perhaps... I know strategy uh, games probably could. Well, which one? A lot of strategy game, game probably uh, could easily benefit from multiple monitor setups. Like, you know, you have a map uh, on one screen. Oh yeah, they can. Um, you could have resource information on another. Oh god. Back in college, Supreme Commander on two monitors. <laughs> one map was dedicated just to the map, the other dedicated to what I see on the screen. Yep. Oh, that was so well, glorious. Kiri, imagine if there's a strategy game that supported four monitors in the upside-down T configuration. Oh, ho, 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 that'd be nice. With And for maximum leap hacker status, uh, one keyboard in front of the three bottom monitors. <laughs> Im embedded, embedded into the desk. I'm waiting for when they can uh, produce a, a good quality see-through LCD screen for uh, proper AR goggles. Because unless we figure out some way to do like, um, somehow create, unless we can figure out how to do holograms uh, without needing a building especially built building to make them. That'd be pretty cool, you know? Proper hologram yeah. technology. Even if it doesn't get to the Star Trek point where you can, you know, touch it. You know, I don't care about that. I'm not holding my breath for this game at that point anytime soon. Oh, come on. Don't you want to have, uh, like, a Star Wars-style uh, communication system? I'd rather a button I can push that I can receive bacon from. True. Replicators sound really nice. Yeah, but wasn't there something about replicators and making food that was problematic or something? Um, there were claims that it didn't taste quite like uh, proper home cooking. That even in blind taste tests, that they can, that the difference could be t uh, told. I mean, for a Star Trek tabletop, um, I actually had a character, though it was the game never went forward. Um, he was an engineer, but he built himself into his own quarters because he would be the ship's chief engineer, so chief engineer privilege. He builds himself a kitchen, a small kitchenette into his quarters. Uh, and he he doesn't like, you know, rep he doesn't like the taste of replicated food. He'll eat yeah. it if he has to, but... I mean, he'll yeah. use the replicator as part of the process, but he'll get the most basic of the ingredients. Like if he's making, um, let's say, for example, burgers, he will just replicate, uh, he'll repl replicate ground beef. Uh, the seasonings, the oils, all that stuff. Mm. Artificial ground beef, that sounds wonderful. Well, would it be any better if it came out already cooked and warm from that machine? Oh god, no. At least God, he's a couple no. steps closer to the real thing. At least he's a couple steps closer to the real thing. I mean, McDonald's would be more realistic than this, than that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean... Other than having you know, just a lot of preservatives in the food, it's still food. You know, it's not like that whole, oh, we have this burger that hasn't, you know, decayed in a year. That that was actually a publicity stunt and they faked it. Yeah, plus it actually had to do with, like, a lack of water content or something like that. Well, no, it's not just that. Is the that display they had, they faked it. It wasn't a real McDonald's burger or something, but they did something to really? it. 
No. And that if you did that to, you know, a burger made by your mom and dad with a proper ground beef, it'd be pretty much the same result. I wouldn't. Uh, it, I don't know if they like, you know, um, put it in like a helium environment or basically an environment where bacterium couldn't work to break the food down, but they did something to it. Because someone else tried to replicate the experiment by just putting it in a jar, and it was gone within a week. Hmm. Yeah. You know, lasted a bit longer than uh, um, a burger with less preservatives, but you know, yeah. These guys cer certainly love their fish. Well, it's the Japanese, and sushi is awesome. Eh, sushi's only... You know, sushi's kind of generic and bland to me. And sushi was pretty good after, like, a, a 100 workout that I did. It just hit the spot. But, you know, it's one of those to each their own. I prefer, you know, I just prefer the taste of warm cooked food. I, I could see the appeal, though, for why someone would like, a, you know, raw salmon that's been soaked in a... What, what, what is it? Is ginger pretty commonly used? Um, I don't know all the stuff uh, rice, the sushi. Rice, ginger, yeah. horseradish. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't exactly get the real wasabi. Now, is there much of a difference? Well, outside of color, I think it's like an issue of t actual taste. Yeah. Maybe if I poke this guy from underneath. Oh, I'm definitely on to something. <clears throat> I mean, I can definitely take out the pincers. That's, that's uh, something special. Take out the pincers, back up, and then just waylay on the front. I think I can do that. Well, that is if I can survive the, the barrage. That's, that's, uh, that's the tough part. <laughs> okay. Get underneath. Take out the pincers, then back the fuck up. Come on, Reese. Why are you getting so hung up on one? Because you're Reese? I think that may be the case. Shit, I didn't even see the guy hit me.
Okay, we got half the problem nailed down. Got too bad that Jason wasn't feeling too well today to do uh, his live streams. Looking forward. I was looking forward to it. Hmm? But Jason couldn't do his, um... Hey, he was sick. I had it happen, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, the last couple of days I've basically been basically passing out around like 8 or 9 p.m. is eh, combination of like cold and medicine. I'm still sniffling like crazy. I've been watching my way through the uh, Samurai Jack series on Hulu. How is that show, anyway? Um, what's the best way to put it? Um, it's it's got a, it's kind of it's got that a unique art style. Um, it's it's different. It is the only way you can really put it. You know, it's not artsy fartsy. It, it, you know, on the cover it can look like it's artsy fartsy, but it isn't. Um, it's just, it just kind of this weird little episodic series that just tells these odd little stories. You know, a man out of time and uh, who didn't wasn't exactly raised in a normal way, even for his time. So. thing I know in relationship to Samurai Jack and recently is that Tumblr got pissed. It gets pissed. It's pissy about the romance. You mean the fact that they're setting up a little bit of, what is it, Romeo Juliet? With uh, Jack and one of the former henchmen of Aku? Yes. Some of them go, some of them some of them think that think that, sh that this just basically weakens her character, and some actually thought that she, some are actually complaining, thinking this is some some oh, some heterosexual bullshit. And I get to see her going, "Why was he ever gay in the first place?" What I read well, it was it, well, it was hinted at he was heterosexual in an early episode too. What I have read was that people were shippers were upset that they, that he was being paired up with with uh, with the henchwoman when yeah, the henchwoman right. should have been supposedly should have been uh, paired up with some some uh, one shot character that uh, that only appeared in one episode is that right? Which character? Know. What is the description of him? I don't know. I, they, they were wanting him, they were wanting this woman to be gay, essentially. They may be referencing the form Aku took in one of the early episodes of, uh, of a fairly attractive swordswoman. Yes. That traveled with Jack. Yes. Here's the problem. I see it. That was Aku in disguise. Oh, well, well, to be fair, it. it is Tumblr. They're not exactly smart. Well, Tumblr also tends to that think. Tumblr tends to be a place where a lot of people who tend to go, My head cannon must be actual cannon! 
I mean, I've, everyone, especially if you do tabletop, and that universe has a tabletop system tied to it, has their own headcanon for their various characters, where they fit in with that world. Yeah, but Tumblr tends to go, my headcanon must be actual cat. They can't, yeah, they tend to go overboard and tend to believe, believe their headcanon has to be, is absolute truth. This fits with the, I make it fit, so it must be part of the show, regardless whether it actually is or not. Okay, um, stop. This is this is actually part of the reason why I fell out of love with the Daria fan base. Because for the longest time, we had um, who here is familiar with the show? By the way, Daria. You know, I, I've heard the name, but I don't know much about it. Uh, she was the Beavis and Butthead spinoff uh, show. She was that. She was that nerdy chick. Anyway. People were hoping that she would get paired up with this uh, with this alternative rock musician type of dude uh, because because he happened to be uh, the girl's best friend's uh, brother. And then eventually they did pair uh, they did pair uh, Daria up with someone, but it wasn't the rock musician, and people got upset about that for a lo for the longest time. I mean, because, that's a good because, question. Pe because people had a dead set that it was bound to happen. Why? Because they've been writing fan fiction about it for freaking years. Okay. Even Hold though fan question. fiction has no reality to the actual what the writers decide. Exactly. A, a quick question about this Daria character: Did they did they just bring this? Um, romance character out of the blue, or was it built up over a period of time and made sense? Uh, okay, let's see. I think it was one of those, it actually built it up over time types. They hinted at the idea of, of a crush in season one. And there was a couple of uh, allusions to it throughout the next couple of uh, seasons. So it was built up over time, so it made sense. However, they they wound up pairing they wound up pairing her up with, well, her best friend's boyfriend, <laughs> what? which made Doria have to be kind of a heel type of person. Wait. You should... She ended up with her best friend's boyfriend? Yes. <laughs> best friend's ex-boyfriend. Okay. Which which then led into a into a uh into a into a into a movie. There was actually a movie. It was on TV, but they were, they wanted it to be in theaters, but that was not happening. The show was not popular enough to be on the silver screen. Yeah, but, it was nowhere near as popular as Beavis and Butthead. Not by a long okay. shot. But yeah, was there, did they give a good reason why she base it, was it was it the her best friend's ex boyfriend, or was it one of those things that she was cheating on that she was helping that guy cheat? If I remember correctly, it just happened right out of the blue. Okay, that that just sounds like bad story writing. I mean, it doesn't excuse the fandom's response uh, for the whole, oh, it should have been this person. If they said, okay, this is just making any sense for the character, then it's like, okay, yeah, the writer's fucked up, but this is like there's nobody good in this scenario. You know those scenarios, Carrie, where every everyone involved is wrong. Yeah, I know those scenarios. Yep, where you wish it was legal to take a pipe wrench to someone's head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially the ones where somehow the fans decide, no, 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 it has to be this way, and the writers capitulate. That never ends well. No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I do I have to say, thank goodness the show's creators never got involved with the fan base. Yep. 
Okay. Back to game. I think I stopped caring about an outer toe. Well, okay, I know every once in a while if a good idea crops up in the fandom that writers will pick it up if it's something good, but that's pretty rare. Yeah. It's like once yeah. in a blue moon, they'll at least yeah. put up like, a neat idea that they can at least build upon. And the rest of the time, it's cancer. Pure, mm -hmm. unadulterated cancer. Of the spleen. I don't know why I picked spleen, but I picked spleen. So you both have to deal with it. It's a uh, kind of a redundant organ that you don't need. It, well, you kind of do need your spleen, but you can live without it. It's kind of weird how it works. Kind of like the gallbladder. Basically, if you have your gallbladder removed, you have to uh, be a bit more careful with your diet and a few things. I think the spleen is something similar. Oh wait, no, the spleen is the is one of the filtration organs, man. Can't get rid of that. Oh, it's pancreas. How? That's what I was thinking of. Uh, well, what about your appendix? Actually, the appendix is... does. No, no, no. The appendix does have a use. People don't really realize it. Um, it's just such a niche use that. Well, in the modern age, you can easily live without it. Yeah. Back in the day, when you got really sick, um, your body could kind of clear itself. Well, it kind of has a somehow as like a last-ditch dump effort for dealing with certain bacterial infections, where it just dumps everything out of your um, uh, gut and everything like that. And the appendix would store um, the good bacteria. So your body could more quickly rebuild the good bacteria using the appendix. And they say that it does have some medical benefits today, but again, it's very niche. Since very, very. It, it, it doesn't protect when you're using very strong anti um, um, antibacterial medication. Plus, uh, over time, it can very well blow up and kill you. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at the chat. I'm remember remember without the pancreas you get diabetes. Diabetes. Almost read that as pan pancreas. Yeah. <laughs> eh, I'm a Bostonian. I can at least get the accent right for the diabetes and the pancreas. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting where medical science is going, though. Yeah. It's also that interesting. You find those surgical mm -hmm. videos. Then there's all those videos about popping giant pimples. Yeah, you kind of end up winding going to those despite watching yeah. all those surgical videos. By the way, here you just reminded me of something. Uh -huh. One of Re Weird Al has, has a song all about the pancreas. Uh, what is the parody of? Let me double check. Not really a parody parody of any particular song, but it is in the style of of Brian Wilson. Of, of Beach Boy fame. <laughs>
Oh my god, will this fish just die? No! You will not die until you eat that swine sushi. Nice. I'm thinking of doing a uh, steamed salmon tomorrow night for dinner. Ooh. I've got a steamer, you know. I have a rice steamer. Cooker. It's unfortunately not the most reliable, so yeah. It's we're basically just to end up baking stuff instead. Special sauce and something the Budweiser cooked with this ice. What you doing, Reese? Um, <clears throat> something fell over and I had to pick it up. Oh, that's why the game paused right now. Yeah, uh, there, there, there's stuff that, there's stuff around me that I'm trying to keep off the ground. You know what would really, really help in this situation? What? A speed up power up. I'm sorry, this is not like most of the f the sh shoot 'em up you play. I know, I know. Still, it would be nice. So the secret to killing the, the the piranha fish? Don't move. Okay, apparently. We are now rushing into the ozone. But you only have two choices. Does that mean either K, J, M, or N doesn't exist? Um. <laughs> I'm overthinking this this branching path thing to absurdity. No, you're not really overthinking it. Um, just imagine, if you will, your first level. Uh, first level being the A zone, and then the path branches to B and C. And then right next to that, uh, E, F, G, H. 
I J K L M. And so on and so on. So A you get B or C, then you pick B you get D and choice of D and E. You go C you get choices of F and G. Kinda, I it it's not really laid out. You're really just expected to guess which which zone you're going into. Because they want you to have a different playing experience every time. This is uh, this game has replay value, but a kind that really hurts to try and remember. Which zones have I been to already? Can you please stop? Sam? Can you please stop calling these giant fishes, robot thingies, battleships? Nein, they are battleships, yeah? I didn't ask for a Nazi here. But there will always be Nazis here, yeah? Isn't that right, Herr Curie? Nah. Wait. <laughs> Dumbass, fail! Well, well, she just known for Nazi. Wait. <laughs> Shit. I, I can't do much more than the uh, German or is it? Or my native bus. Yeah. The no, Russian. Yes. Yeah. Oh my sometimes you. Sometimes you you must design battleship like giant fish. It provides per, it it provides perfect aerodynamics. Would 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 you not agree? But then you have lots of wasted space due to the being shaped like a like a fish. It becomes very minimalistic. You would you have prefer only the amount of space the fish allows? Yeah, um, would, would, you would, have to work would, would, that. Would, would you prefer the ship be shaped like a bird? Or a boat? Or a human? Or what? A human um, shaped a human shaped vessel? Uh, that, that is a, that, that is that absurd. Is that is just silly. Yeah, very silly indeed. I, I don't think Zephyr would like would like human sized battleship. Oh no, 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 not at all. Nor would they nor would Zephyr like human shaped battleship. Thank you battleship. for reminding me reminding me of the bird shaped say spaceship from the ending of Her Majesty's Spiffing. I I so just bad. not know what she's talking about, do you, Herr Kiri? No? Not. Uh, Her Majesty's what? Secret Service was it? Well, you talking about the sequel because the original didn't have that. No, I'm talking about Her Majesty, Majesty Spiffing. Oh, okay, we're thinking of different movies then. I'm not thinking of a movie. I'm thinking of a video game. Spiffing sounds like a very dirty art. You're such a dirty, dirty girl, you girl. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of a very, very on the very edge of fourth walling walling game game involving a Englishman and a Welsh spaceman and destroying and finding a planet and just and annoying a Frenchman with his ape apparently. Oh, oh, oh. If you want to annoy the Frenchman then you must deal with the dead pool. Is that is the annoying man who keeps breaking the fourth wall? Send everyone into silence. My job is complete. But to be fair, it, just talking, talking Hitlerese, it it kind of uh, it, it kind of hurt my jaw. I was a little trying bit. to be French. And I was trying to be French in that last one. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Ho 
<laughs> we have number one. I wish you were more, more fun ways of making fun of the French. Oh, well. They have uh, they have twelve different terms for surrender. Their tanks have uh, five speeds: one forward, four reverse. This feels so grammar school, as it were. I just remember one of the big things you had to do is to lure the Frenchman away with, with Swiss cheese and a frog. I get the frog, but I'm not getting the Swiss cheese. Something cheese related. Sometimes I dream of cheese. Limburg? Uh, it was, it was a, it was actually... Smelly cheese. I don't... Like, it wasn't got anything to smell. It was, it was actually English. It was mild English cheddar, and then, and then the French blasted holes in it. And then later, when you gave gave it with a frog, he just called it Swiss cheese. Hmm. Speaking of cheese, I'm gonna go ground downstairs and make myself a grilled cheese. Yeah. You want one, Kiri? I would like one. I haven't had one in, in actually the better part of a year. Yeah, same here. You ever tried adding pepperoni to a to a grilled cheese sandwich? I tried tomatoes. So I figured, eh, get a little bit of uh, the vegetables in there. Of course, I also add bacon, so... Bacon! That and I also added spam, which surprisingly wasn't that bad. No, I mean spam is just highly processed meat. Yeah, it's basically like your school lunch meat. Yeah. Except more than likely going to give you cancer. Eh, it's it's Hormel bacon flavored, so why not? Yay, I am now very happy. And I am very stuffy. <sighs> I'm sorry for you being stuffy. Oh. And this swordfish fish robot is being a bitch. And you figured that you could just give the pass with swordfish and that would just take it out right then and there. Ugh. And that's how it works, right? Yeah, if your name is uh, if your name is John Travolta. Wait, what are you talking about, Reese? Wrong swordfish. I know. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about in the first place. It was a movie named named Swordfish. Never heard of it. Yeah. Although I have a feeling here he's talking about a different swordfish entirely. Oh, basically, if, unless it references the pa every password being swordfish. But yeah, basically, yeah, it's the one with, with John Travolta and Halle Berry. I just go created by Minecraft base so I never have to eat food while within its con uh, confines again. How does that work? I have a machine that gives me the saturation effect. So you have your own ring of sustenance? I've heard of that. What one is that from? It's, a three, it's in D&D 3.5, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Basically the ring, it basically takes care of all your daily food and water requirements. And lets you get away with only two hours of sleep. Yeah, that sounds like a useful ring to have. Oh, it is. 
but it also fills up a ring slot because there are other very useful things you may want to get. Yeah, depending upon your DM, they may either let you only have one ring or let you have like up to four plus rings. Um, most systems just say two rings, one on each hand. But yeah, basically I have this machine called the Environmental Controller, and I put the upgraded saturation module in there. Amazingly cheap to make both of them, actually. Block a diamond, block an emerald, block a gold, block a iron for the machine, with some other bits of change of other things. The saturation modifier was just, I think, iron, uh, ink sac, and iron ink sac, and some redstone. And you had to go punch a couple of zombies with some syringes that you had to make out of uh, glass and uh, iron. Pretty cheap to make overall. Can't wait to hear the day that you have modded Minecraft for nothing. You play basic computer games on it. It's already happened. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a mod for that. Yeah, it's called Open Computers. Before before it was a computer craft. People could make very simple uh, games on it. Basically using, like uh, uh, Zork? Uh, more like they probably get up to Dwarf Fortress level of graphics, though not complexity of game. Or hey, different, within Minecraft, uh, we have hit the level of Dwarf Fortress. Sweet well, Jesus. Well, Dwarf Fortress graphics, not complexity. Fair enough. I mean, basically, Minecraft is basically a uh, 3D War Fortress. Kind of. Minus evil, murderous stuff. And I've, uh, and I'm hiding the uh, environmental controller under the dirt in my underground meditation garden. Your 3D comment reminds me of something. Hmm. I base I have now ba what I basically described as the 3D version of Happy Wheels, called Guts and Glory by Tiny Build. God, it's been years since I played that game. Which game? Happy Wheels. Fair enough. But yeah, Kiri, my uh, plan is for this place. Um, you know, what? I'm about to take a quick picture of it. It's still a work in progress, but you can get the gist. Sending now it to, to take uh, on the U zone. They have a zone for every letter of the alphabet. I think they do. Hell, this might be the last one. For your, for this run. Yeah, here, here's a quick, what's kind of the look of it. It's a pleasant little garden. Though I'm going to be adding in a couple of small structures, some pathways. And I'm planning on forest. Uh, just a couple. It's an underground garden. Just a couple of trees. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of the walls and dome, a, a kind of half dome structure in here, with these black blocks called anti blocks that are just solid black in color, and make it like this room is a just flo a floating island in the void. You'll also be an anti block. Well, it's just the name of the block. They are just perfect, solid color blocks. I'm going to use a black one. But thanks to the little saturation module, I don't need to eat anymore. Yeah. 
and I just extended the uh, saturation food field to a much larger area of my base because I actually have the excess power at the moment for it. Iron and hammer. And soon I will install the bees. Yes. Yep. I have uh, two types of bees. One type are called production bees, and the other type are called effect bees. And there's a third type, but that one's not really needed at this point. It's called a breeding bee. That one's a small scale that I'll do everything by hand, but the other two, the auto, uh, the production bee and the um, effect bee, well, the production bee obviously produces something, and very basically various mob drops. I don't want to have to build mob farms, um, and mainly because one, it, if I don't build it right, it causes lag, and I don't want to have to go through that trial and error. And I get much more fine control with the bees. And to the uh, way to do the mob farm that does have the fine control, they've had to nerf it on the server because people have abused it. You know how it is. A couple of bad apples ruin everything for everyone else. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. But bees haven't been nerfed as of yet, and I don't think they will nerf them because it's got a really high, ba uh, high barrier to entry. It took me the better part of a day just focusing on it, and that was after I got the infrastructure built, which took a couple hours on a different day. Based on my production bees, they'll be producing things like nether stars, wither skeleton skulls, uh, blaze powder, ender pearls, things like that. Amazingly, I can't get rotten flesh, but I'll, I know how I will be dealing with that. And then I have the effect bees. That I will be collecting their production materials as well, but I'll have a system that'll uh, automatically void it and all the excess because, well, I only need so much of it. And those bees will be generating certain effects for me. Um, a cup, um, the bulk of them will be producing... Um, they have what's called the Explorer effect, which gives me ex free XP. So, hooray for free XP, right, Kiri? Yep. It'll allow me to do enchanting and uh, things like that. The next thing um, would be... What was it? There were a uh, there's another bee I'll have a couple of that are called... That have the... I think it's called fertility. And it will increase the... Uh, my, it'll increase the speed of uh, the turnover of my crops. So everything grows faster in my area. I'll have a couple of those. Don't want to go too many because that could cause lag on the server. But having a couple around would make life quite nice. And I haven't thought of any other effects that I would like as of yet. Um, there's one called uh, Beautific, uh, which gives you regeneration. I know I'll probably need to breed that bee at some point if I want to get into this one magic mod called Blood Magic. But other than that, I'd have to go through the list of all the effects.
So now I'm attempting to rush through the V zone. Oh. Okay. Which is rather odd because this is a horizontal zone. Yeah, just looking at the uh, base effects, uh, the ones that are beneficial would be uh, Beautific, Explorer, um, I don't know if there's a water effect that'd be useful, but I don't think it exists. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, there's no water effect that was that must have been removed. Um, heroic would be useful if mobs could even spawn in my area, but they don't. Shell is approaching fast. Gee, could it be a snail? Or perhaps a turtle? I mean we gotta keep it uh we gotta keep it regulated to sea aquatic life. Ah, sure enough it's a turtle. So you're basically sticking out ones that were just vicious this the whole time up to this point? <clears throat> they probably ran out of sea creatures. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if they got one that looks like a shrimp. Or maybe it's yeah. not. Yeah, the only ones that are worth it are going to be the um, Explorer Bee. Um, and the Beautific Bee would be the only... And the um, and that uh, for, uh, Fertility Bee. Those are the only three that would be useful for any real reason. Um, resurrection, sorry, a reanimation might be useful if I put it in a very confined area as a kind of a very controlled mob spawner. But other than that, I don't see much use for the other things. Heroic, uh, only at, at attacks nearby mobs. I don't need to worry about that. Wait, it died that quickly? Wow. That's this rather, is weird. That that's rather bizarre. I'll be happy to get to move forward. your final zone game over you final boss was a turtle you destroyed all enemies and war is over you are the bravest pilot 
See you again next game. The credits. Thank you all for sharing us your robotic fish fetish with us. Just over 7 million points. Very nice. Yay! Did I put you in first place as far as scores go? He's the only scores. I was about to say, it better be first place. <laughs> it wasn't first place, I would go. Did the game break or something? Because you're the only one with a score. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that was Darius by Taito. Cool. Hey guys, I'm gonna punch out for the night. You have a good, good night. night. See you. I'll try to pop it more often, guys. Okay. And wait a minute. I just noticed your ship looks kind of eagle-like. And eagles do tend to catch fish. Mm. <laughs>